gamers, I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And we are Dyson Dragons, and today we are going to be reviewing the Chronicles of Crime by Lucky Duck Games and designed by David, I believe it's Sicurel. I did see on the Kickstarter page that uh, the new scenarios are being translated from French. If you do happen to see this review, David, let me know if I pronounced your name properly or if I just completely mangled it. Now, Julie's going to tell you more about the game itself, but just to mention, we are playing the retail release, so we do not have any of the Kickstarter extras and uh, expansions. Now, most of that stuff will be getting released later on uh, this year, so don't feel like you're being, uh, sorry, that you're missing out on anything by starting with the retail version. Now, I'll let Julie take it away. So it's a cooperative game that's one to four players, plays in 60 to 90 minutes, and is for ages 12 and above. I'd say that the gameplay is significantly faster with lower player counts. I think so too. And what you're going to be doing in this game is you have a board and you are going to be scanning, doing a lot of scanning as this is an app-enabled game. Now I'll tell Julie a little bit more about some of the tools that you can use to play the game. You're going to let me? I thought you were going to tell me. Sorry about that. Uh, so you can use uh, an iPad, an iPhone, or Samsung phone to uh, scan QR codes that are on the board uh, that will allow you to uh, interrogate or investigate uh, the crime as you proceed along the scenario. Yes, you will also be using your app to take a look at a virtual environment to get clues, so it's all pretty cool. One thing that you can do as well, if you have the tech for it, you can cast to your television so that everyone can see it at the same time and you're not going to be passing it around to other players. There are also some pretty cool VR goggles that you can get. Now those were included with some of the Kickstarter expansions, but uh, they will be re releasing those, um, sorry, that expansion later on in 2019. With that being said, what are we going to do, Julie? We're going to grab our drinks. We're going to grab our drinks. Grab our best friend. We're gonna take it to the table. We're gonna take it to the table. So this will be interesting. I mean, I'm wearing my Inquisitor sweater because that has something to do with investigations, I think. Okay. Inquisitions. I guess so. I think, I think all of my years of watching crime shows on TV should make me pretty good at this. You watch a lot of Bones. A lot of Bones. And Castle. I think I like Castle better. At least oh. the characters. Bones. Castle. Now we're going to take a look at the components for Chronicles of Crime, but we are going to set up the game at the same time. There's really not a lot to set up, as you can see, not a lot of components, and it just makes more sense to do it all at once. So first we've got the game board, which has places for the different locations. You can also keep track of different characters here, as they're a reference and you might not know what locations they are in. And then here we've got our different forensic experts, and we've got the location deck here. We're going to take a closer look at each of those things now. We'll start with the character deck. So as you can see from the number here, there are 55 characters. Now each character is generic, meaning they don't have a name. You can notice that their number is listed right there. And the QR code to scan them when you want to interact with them in the app. Don't worry, we'll take a look at that in the how to play. So as you can see, we've got some nice art and a lot of different characters no one is the same. Here we have the two clue decks. You'll notice that there are the ones with the star on them. They are labeled 1 through 15. And then you've got your standard clues that go up to 37. Now when you take a look at the clue, once again on this uh, the facing side of it, you will see the number at the top, what it is, food, and the QR code to scan it. Now one thing I do want to mention, the clues can be a little generic. So for example, clue number 30 here, bags and fashion, will also refer to things like briefcases. So keep that in mind while you're playing the game. If you can't find the clue, it might fall under another category, like blood and organs could also refer to a dead body. Papers can also refer to things like letters. Now if we take a look at these stars, the 15, these are your more like definitive clues or items that you're given. So for example, this is money. Uh, that's a reference. We're not going to talk about that one. 
If you get access to a, you know, a cell phone or some type of communication device, poison, jewelry, jacket. So these are all very specific clues that may relate to certain cases. And we'll put that over here. Next, we'll take a quick look at the location. So we have the home location, Scotland Yard. And for the purposes of the setup, I'm just going to place it. Scotland Yard is placed here on the board. Now these other locations, we're going to need to keep them off to the side. And I may just move them off camera. But you can see all, a lot of the different locations in London. And I really do like the setting and the art of all of this. They are labeled A all the way through P, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, A through P. You got locations like Lambex and Brighton, Easton and Whitechapel. And don't need to go over it in too much detail. You notice that each location is the space to hold up to three different characters. Now I'm going to move this off to the side. I'll be taking them out and laying them around the board when they come into play. But to give you an example, they will go on different positions like this. And you've got a total of seven locations all around the board that can be out in any case. Now, we've got these moved off to the side. We'll now take a look at our forensic experts. We've got Dr. Jeremy King, the doctor, whose specialization is autopsy and medical issues. We've got Harvey Marshall, the criminologist, whose specialization is human psychology and crime history. Call him if you need a psych profile on anybody. And if you found a body, uh, Dr. Jeremy King is your man. We've got Lou Chin, the scientist, who handles all of the physical evidence. So any melee weapons, tools, murder weapons, she's your girl. And we've got Eric Gloomery, the hacker, who specializes in hacking and intelligence. Now, it's very important that you look at their specialization because they may be the ones that you have to have got to go through for clues. Now, it's not always very intuitive. Sometimes you're really trying to go with the way the designers have sort of viewed the case. And uh, I did find it frustrating at times. And we'll talk more about that when we get to our review. Now, we're just going to place these guys here. I like having them sort of right up front and not in the way of anything else that I want to lay out. We're going to get them all laid out. Hopefully, we've got enough room. And they're all nicely on camera, uh, except for Lu Chin. We can't see her QR code. So we'll change this up just a little bit. We're going to stack the scientists like this so you can see them. And it shouldn't interfere with the, the location. And we've got two and two beside the board. And we'll move them up. Just trying to make sure everything looks good for the camera as we get into the how to play. We will place the character cards and the clue cards here. And don't forget, we also need our trusty electronic device. For the purposes of this game, I prefer the iPad. I like the bigger screen. So that's what I'm using. But you can use an Android device or an Android phone or iPhone as well. But you do need an electronic device in order to play the game. It is an app-enabled game. You also have the rule book, but the one thing I want to point out, the rule book pretty much says to start the game, how to set it up, just like we've covered, and just recommend starting the game with the app. And to be honest, I think that is definitely the way to go. So we've done it. We've set up the game. I'm just going to put the rule book off to the side. We're not going to need it. And now we're going to get into our how to play. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to do a quick version of the how to play, but I'm going to try to finish the full playthrough of the tutorial. Now, will it all be in one video? I have not decided yet. We're going to see how things go and how long it will take me to get through the tutorial. I'm trying to get these uh, videos down to be a little bit more manageable. So keep it right here. And we're going to get in our police car, drive across the city and start interrogating some suspects. So we've got our iPad, as you can see, the app is open, and we're going to start off with the tutorial. Now I am screen capturing the iPad, I will have it here on camera just so you guys can see me interacting with it, but I'm not sure I'm going to try to cut in between both. It may or may not work, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. First time I'm trying this. So we hit play to start our first case. Now we get the explanation that this is the tutorial scenario and explains about the game, how it's a co-op, what we need to do, and it tells us 
who we need to take out for our first character. So we need to take the chief officer, which is character 33. I'm gonna put the iPad down. I'm gonna grab, go through this, officer, chief officer 33, and place him in Scotland Yard. Now, I'm just gonna put these cards a little bit here out of the way. We'll go back to the iPad. And we need to talk to him. So what I'm going to do is now I have to scan his QR code. And we enter into a conversation with the chief. Now this may be a conversation or it could be an interrogation. So what does the chief say? At last you're here. I have a case for you. An old woman, 07, has been found dead. I need you to find out if it's a natural death or a homicide. You are currently in interrogation mode. The image and name of the person you are interrogating will appear at the top. So that's just tutorial info. I'm gonna skip over this. I'm not going to uh, read it out loud. You can definitely read it or experience it if you decide to play the tutorial yourself. Now, I'm gonna place the iPad back down. We are gonna grab number seven. Pick it back up. And now I'm going to go ahead and scan the code. So this woman's name is Anna Taylor. She's been found dead in her home in the Notting Hill District. G. Here's the asterisk. Here's the address. Maybe you should go there and investigate. Now I need to take out Notting Hill. I'll reach over and grab these locations, and I can place these anywhere. You know, like on the board. I'm going to place place it. No location that's not going to be uh, too difficult for me to reach and scan which is why I'm placing it actually at the top here now I could place it closer and just because of where I'm putting down the iPad and reaching across the camera is so difficult that's why it's up there if there's anything that you need to see I will move it closer now what we need to do is go to Notting Hill so I reach the iPad over scan the code and we go to Notting Hill now it's asking me if I want to exit interrogation mode and move to the victim's apartment, which is what I want to do. So we're now Notting Hill. As you can see, it tells me where I am. This is just more tutorial information, which explains how you're going to be interacting with the app. Now I have the opportunity to search for clues, which means I'm going to want to hit search for clues here and then we get to decide what we're going to do. Now I can play on a viewer device, basically casting it to something else. I can play with the virtual reality glasses, but I figured that works better on a phone. But we're going to use it without the VR. Now what we're getting here is a scene. Now we can move the iPad as so to move around, or we can move around just using our finger. As you can see, we've got some papers, there's some food, we've got dead animals, looks like they may have eaten the cake. What else do we have here? There is a smashed window, well no, sorry, not window, a mirror. Flowers and decorations, nothing that really stands out. We've got games, playing cards, you can zoom in uh, as well. And I think we are, we're good. So now we have the chance to pass this to another player. In this case, it's single player, so we're just gonna say no. But you can also just sort of extend your time in a solo mode if you want to. Now, what I'm gonna do is do you spot any clues? Now to confirm if we spotted the right clues, we're going to just take these clue cards out and you don't wanna put them on your board necessarily right away is going to confirm, or well, the game will confirm if you need to put it out. Now, what did we see? And I'm just going through. So we saw the food and papers. I'm looking for the animals and the games. Got the animals here. Then we got the games and toys. So notice how I'm just putting them to the side I could be putting them over here, but uh, I wanted them to be someplace where I have easy access to them. And we're then going to take the iPad and scan it. So we'll scan the food. 
you pick up a cream cake, that, cake that's been partially eaten, and it's a clue. We then are told to place it on the clue board. Now the tutorial is helping us to suggest who can help us with that uh, analysis. Now I don't want to go and scan the scientist right away like the tutorial suggests. That just actually wastes time. I want to get all my evidence at once. So you find a classic deck of 52 playing cards, apparently usual pastime for the victim, which is another clue. Now it's telling us that the criminologist can help us out with that. Let's now take a look at the papers that we found on the floor. So we got a letter with the following text. Give up on the tournament. You are not as strong as you were. For the good of the club, leave your spot to someone younger. So we've got information about a club. And then we need to scan the animals. So we have the victim's cats, which are dead. And the doctor can help us by making a medical analysis. So I think we've covered everything, really. So now we need to talk to our experts. I'm gonna start with the doctor. So I'm moving the iPad over to scan the doctor. Positive, it's a little off camera. So we're asking what I, who should I autopsy? Well, we definitely want to autopsy the animals, but we're gonna to want to do something on, uh, on the old woman as well. So the doctor says, Dr. Schrodinger's theories are useless. The cats died of digitalis poisoning. Now we'll grab digitalis. We'll add it to our board. So just jumped ahead a little bit. So like, he, like I was telling you, this means it's a special clue. Now I do want him to perform an autopsy on the old woman. So the woman died around 10.30 p.m. yesterday. Her heart just stopped. We have found an unusually large amount of digitalis. So as we can see, it was the digitalis that caused her death. Don't we have any more questions for her? For him, we're now going to scan the criminologist. So you're calling the criminology center. I study the psycholo psychological profiles of killers and the history of crime. Can I help you with anything? I'm gonna ask him about the papers and the games and toys. Now this tells us that our victim, Anna Taylor, was part of a bridge club D in Leicester Square. Apparently her partner did not want her to participate in the tournament. Now I'll put the iPad down and we will grab the location D, Leicester Square, and I'm going to place it right here. That is probably the next easiest place for me to scan. Now we can also scan the games, find more information about that. And it says this particular deck is used to play bridge. It's a game played by teams of two where one partner can become what is called the dummy. In some countries, the dummy is called the death. And Taylor was part of a bridge club in Leicester Square. D. So it's sending us to Leicester Square no matter what. No more questions for him, really. We want to talk to our scientist. And we'll ask her about the animals. I believe they designed the uh, were killed by the digitalis. Oh, but the animal corpses were the wrong thing. Sorry, I meant uh, the food. So you can see like right there, Lu Chin. And if you're wondering, actually, this is a good thing to show you guys, there's the history. So you can go back. Who could be so cruel as to kill a sweet little kitty? Unfortunately, animal corpses are not my area of expertise. Now, I'll scan the food, which is what I wanted to ask her about. So my analysis confirmed the traces of digitalis inside the cake. The quantity might not have been harmful to your eye, but it would have been fatal to an elderly woman like the victim. So we know that it was the cake. We've got information. I'm pretty sure that we're done here. So now we can go over to Leicester Square and Hyde Park. So we scan it. And now it tells us what happens when we go over to the bridge club. And we're going to take out woman 04. And we're gonna just go through the section of the bridge club here. Now we get more tutorials. So there's so many clues to be found at the crime scene. Don't hesitate to observe closer and to turn around and look at your feet. Now the tutorial is saying I may have not found all the clues, but I think I got what I need to go on. You can always go back and take a look. Now, 
You can scan the character once location is entered and go into interrogation mode. Just telling us once again how we can talk to this person. All right. So essentially what I need to do now is I'm going to have to start scanning and talking to this person and we're going to have a whole other conversation. So what I am going to do right now, that is our how to play. We've taught you how to play the game. I'm going to take a quick break. We're going to cut right here and depending on how things are going and how long this video is, I'm either going to jump right into the review. Uh, for those of you that are going to be maybe watching this as a playthrough, uh, it's going to really depend on how long the whole video comes out to. This first section will be included in the playthrough uh, as well. So keep it right here, guys, and we'll be right back. It'll be a surprise for you unless you take a look at the timestamps, whether it's the review or it's uh, continuing on with the playthrough. You'll have to do a little bit of uh, investigating. And we're back with our playthrough of Chronicles of Crime, the tutorial. We are in Leicester Park. And let's interrogate this young woman who I don't know who she is. Her name is Jenny May. I'm new to the club, but if I can help you, please let me know. So we're going to be asking about Anna Taylor. Anna was the president of the Bridge Club, and we owe a lot to her. She was the teammate of one of our best players, Rose. 09. Rose is here today. No. We'll take out Rose. And place her in the Bridge Club. And we can ask her about Rose. Rose is competitive and she often argued with Anna because they were losing more and more often. But they most likely reconciled because Rose sent a cake to Anna 07 yesterday. Well, we know the cake was full of digitalis. I think we really have found our culprit. Now, just more tutorial information. We can ask her about the food. Let's see. I heard Rose was on the phone with the delivery man, she was trying to get a cake delivered to Anna. Now we can ask her about the bridge, what's going on. I discovered bridge only recently and I love it. I lose often, not like Rose, who wins almost every single tournament. There's one tomorrow, tomorrow, actually with a big cash prize for the winning team. Uh, so as you can see, Rose really wanted to win. I don't think we've got much more to ask about her. We can ask her about the poison though, maybe she knows something. I don't think so. I do use many dangerous substances when I have to put down animals, but definitely not digitalis. Alright, so she just gave us some more information. She is a vet. We'll exit the interrogation and we'll now talk to Rose. So Rose, we're practicing for a big bridge tournament right now. How can I help you? We want to ask her about the game. Let's see if she admits to it. Anna was supposed to be my partner, but she sucked at bridge. Her death is a tragedy. Tragedy I would have never wished upon her. Though it's true, it will allow me to have a better partner for tomorrow and hopefully win a big prize. Pretty cool. Let's ask her about the cake. It's true, I confess. I send the cake in it. I send the cake to Anna in order to get her sick and forfeit tomorrow's tournament. I never wanted her to die. So we found out who the culprit is. We've got enough information. We can. Ask her about the digitalis. You need to be careful with the fox, the phloxcla flower. It's dangerous because of the digitalis it contains, but it's beautiful nonetheless. Now, she confessed. We really don't have much more to do. We can go back to Scotland, guys. Now, what we get to do is we get to solve the case. Now, what we have to do is we have to scan in the information. So who killed Ann Taylor? It was Rose. Why was she killed? We scanned the clue we got. Bridge. It was the murder weapon. We know it was the digitalis that we then scanned. And well done. We've completed the tutorial. So the answers you give at the end can send you back to the investigation or provoke a different ending, which is kind of neat. Now, we can bust the solution button to learn everything there was about the case in case we missed something. And we'll just read through it. Anna Taylor was president of the Bitch Club, but also a terrible player. Her partner Rose Butterfly is a true competitor. To stop Anna from participating in the tournament, therefore to get a new partner, Rose offered Anna a cake with a trace of digitalis, hoping to make her temporarily sick. But Anna wasn't young anymore, and her body couldn't support the quantity of digitalis found in the cake, nor could her cats, by the way. Rose, on the other hand, will be able to start her own Bridge Club in prison. And there we have it. We go back to the main menu. 
we have definitely just uh, completed the tutorial. So as you can see, the game is very straightforward. You get an idea of what you're going to be doing in the game. And for those of you that uh, are watching this as a playthrough or as a review, I'm thinking this is just going to be a review because uh, that last section was fairly short. We're going to be cutting now to our review of the game. So Chronicles of Crime, what did you think of the game? Well, I was looking forward to it. This is um, this game has a an app component, which is something we've enjoyed in other games like Descent and Imperial Assault. So I thought it could be interesting. Yeah, arguably those games were greatly improved by having an app. Now you don't need an app to play them, which is the difference between them and Chronicles of Crime. You cannot play this game without an app. Um, so one of the and I also thought that the concept of you know investigating a crime would be a lot of fun especially since I love my crime shows and I love my mystery books I thought this could be a lot of fun uh, one of the things I really like about this game is is the art um, the characters are very well drawn out they're very different and there's quite a few uh, yeah. characters <laughs> and I do like the fact and I'll just chime in with the positives on the, on the art as well so we can keep the review flowing a little you know a little cleaner is that I did like that each character, you know, you're, you're going to be scanning stuff for information, as we said, but the look of the character actually plays into their own story, such as there's one character that has a scar, and you actually find out the reason why he's got the scar, which I thought was pretty cool, and I got to give the game credit for. It does pay a lot of attention to the little details, just with the art. What do you think about the locations? I thought it was interesting that they bring you throughout London and, and you really feel like like you're in London with uh, with the game. Um, yeah, the cityscape one was very nice. That location felt like, you know, all the images, never been to London, but have you been to London? Nope. No, we see lots of images of downtown London. I felt it captured yep. that feel very well. Uh, something else that I also really liked was uh, the st storytelling. So the, the story is is really good. I, I would say until we got to the third scenario, uh, I then at that point I felt like we kind of exited reality a little bit and, and it got a little too uh, out there. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I do think that the story kind of, it ramps up and it's it's going well, but then it kind of goes from like, not even, kind of clears like level 100. It definitely jumps to the realm of a mo movie and fantasy and maybe a Mission Impossible plot. And that's, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, one of the... Um, the things we'd say about um, using the app and, and, and the art, I would say, is when you're looking at the crime scene, uh, you crime scene images, it's best if you've downloaded the app to a larger screen device. So if you have a tablet or, or an, uh, an iPad, probably best to do it on that. Because when we tried to do it the first scenario with the, uh, an iPhone, even though phone screens are pretty big, it wasn't big enough. And it's hard to see what you're looking at. You can, as um, Jason said in the intro, you can cast it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can cast it to a TD TV. We have not tried that though. No, uh, and and VR is not yet available, right? Unless you had the Kickstarter version, which exactly. we are not using. So we haven't tested the VR. It could be really cool, but you definitely the bigger screen made it a lot easier. Uh, one negative I would say about the crime scene art. Yeah. I would say I think the the scenery itself looks good, but I think what the problem would be more the clues. Yeah, so the clues that they leave, um, for some of them, it's just quite obvious that they're leaving you a clue because their detail is that much um, that much greater than the rest of the environment. Uh, I'm thinking to some magazines that were there, uh, that were on the ground in one of them that made it very, very, very clear that you're supposed to notice them. But other things, not so much uh, because they tried to make them more visible, visible and more important, um, but then they, out of context, um, they don't really make sense. So there's a piece of jewelry that is magnified way out of proportion and we were looking at it going, what is that? No, it would be nice if there was maybe a way that you could like click on it like, yeah. and zoom in on it so yeah. you would get an idea of what it was. We completely missed a clue in the, the second mission because we thought it was a coaster. I was like, is that a coaster? What is that? No. And then we got, that's one nice thing that the game does do. It, is a little bit on the linear side though it kind of told us we forgot the clue <laughs> yeah so i think that's one of the things that we want to get into uh, actually um one of the things that's a little bit on the negative side for me uh, a lot on the negative side if i'm really honest is the li the linear aspect of it that as we as you've talked about the game is timed 
and there are things that they just really don't want you to get to at at, at the certain time frame. Um, uh, I think we only really ran into that in the, the third yes. scenario. I the first one, well, we did the tutorial. It's very straightforward. It's kind of neat, very easy. It's designed to teach you the game. It's part of the reason why our how to play is going to be fairly light uh, on this one. And in the second, sorry, so the first real mission, we didn't really run into that time block, but we only really had sort of one day to do it. And the second mission, it didn't hit us too hard, but there was definitely some trying to push us to different locations at specific times. Yeah, so I the think... The third one was tough, though. Yeah, I think the, the major thing for me, as opposed to, if you want to consider this a choose-your-own-adventure, it really does push you a certain way and if you're not going the way I think they anticipate that you're going to play or the way they think you should be playing you run into some pretty big circular arguments uh, that just and then you're stuck and then you have to backtrack and try to figure out so yeah. quite a few times you know we found out a lot of interesting information but then couldn't access it and as uh, well, I, sorry not to just jump in there, but I think what we kind of realized later on in our play is that we have the characters that you're able to contact for information. There is the doctor, the hacker, the forensic scientist, and the criminologist. And we had not really use the criminologist a lot. And then kind of realized later on, it's almost like you're phone a friend, at least the criminologist. If someone mentions somebody and they're kind of off to the side, you don't have any full details, call the criminologist and they'll give you more information. And we didn't really realize that. I don't think the game necessarily made it clear throughout our other plays, but I also kind of found that frustrating. It kind of felt like something out of uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire instead yeah, of a, a I, game. <laughs> I also feel that the mechanics of the game lack a little bit of, of that aspect of being able to uh, have an action other than just scanning and to be able to say when you're scanning if you want to question if you want to investigate I'd love to be able to say I want to arrest this person because you know and bring them in for questioning because there are times where we knew somebody was involved and they're being cagey and in real life they get arrested and questioned you know and and we didn't have that option and it became painfully frustrating in the third mission um, that we had a very good idea about what was going on and kept having to waste our time because we couldn't, you know, the, the basically the, uh, the people who were investigating weren't being cooperative and we couldn't get anything more. Uh, and I think also in the third mission, and let me know if you agree, when we were following a lead and then on this linear path, they've decided to bring us back we had like in real life or in a choose your own invention adventure you wouldn't necessarily you wouldn't once you're in front of people providing you with information say hold on i'm being called back i'm going to leave i'll come back and hope you're still here tomorrow yeah that was the thing that i think really threw us off during the third mission and it kind of i'd say soured us a lot on the game as we were called back and in retrospect after we played through the second day of the third mission we realized why they called us back we needed sort of something to fill the time before another event would happen but we didn't want to leave because we're like well we busted these people like the people that we were interrogating admitted to wrongdoing i didn't think they were going to be there the next day right. i was like we gotta interrogate them now because they're just gonna peace like, we can't arrest people, we can't do that kind of stuff. Now, one thing I did see on the Kickstarter page is there are some actions that you can do in some of the expansions. Now, I don't believe those actions are compatible with the base game, but it does seem like they've tried to address some of the complaints that we have, at least with uh, with the game right now. So I just wanted to mention it. But that was that was very frustrating, and we kind of started spinning our spinning our wheels a little bit, and we ran into some issues that, you typically find in a computer game where you're not really getting the right information, you're missing the one thing, you need to talk to that one person that's going to give you the clue and set you down the right path. And that brings me to one thing I want to say about the game. There's no reason for this to be a board game. It's neat to have the board. This entire game could have been done in an app with all the same features. It would have been streamlined, less stuff to take out, and you wouldn't have to scan anything. You could literally just click and get the information and that's a big negative for me i do see what they're trying to do with the technology but if it can be summarized as this is carmen san diego 
turned into a board game where you need an app to do it. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I do think that it's very innovative what they've been trying to do. But as Julie pointed out, you, you can't take an action. We don't actually have characters that we're playing in the game. We can't arrest people. We just need to go and get all the information. And at the time that the game decides that you would like to solve the crime, you then solve the crime. And, and you know, not having characters brings me to another one of the negatives that I have with this game. It doesn't have to be. I have don't see a reason, at least in this version, why there's a maximum of four. Uh, people that can play. Uh, maybe it's as you're passing around the phone, you can only look at it four times. But there, there is no mechanic really or no part of this game where we both have to contribute or four people can contribute or any way to distinguish why there's more, uh, more players playing the game. Uh, you could easily play two players and sit back and, you know, basically one person does all the scanning and somebody could jump in. There could be a very dominant player in this and do, running the whole show. There's nothing for the second player or third player or fourth player to do necessarily. Uh, I think that of all the games we've played, this is one game that probably is easier played alone. No, oh, and I, I'd have to agree with you when... Coming back to your comments about choose your own adventure, I mean, that clearly had a two-player mechanic to it, but you could easily play choose your own adventure solo. I think this game might be best played solo, at least in terms of the experience, unless you, you got the VR goggles. I did really enjoy our collaboration and figuring stuff out, but it, it also adds time to the gameplay. Yeah. And I have played through some of the stuff solo after we realized that we missed stuff, I went through it, and it definitely was easier and did flow a lot easier solo. It would be fun if each of the added characters brought something new to the table, uh, a, a skill or something that, okay, well, if you're two players, you have an investigator and one that's, you know, I'm going to bring X-Files into this. You got Mulder and Scully, you know, that type of different personality or skills that make the investigation easier. Uh, or maybe you're playing the different scientists and if you're there... Uh, mm -hmm. you know, you have that skill, that advantage of, of being there right away. And if you're only playing two players, then you have to phone the hacker or you have to phone. Yeah. So all that to say, I'm not trying to design the game. I'm not a game designer. I'm just saying that the first mission that we played was so easy that we basically were just, you know, one person was scanning away and it's, it's easy to just, you know, forget yeah. that there's a second player. The missions got a little bit harder and we had to talk about it a little bit more. But unless you're consciously making an effort to pass the phone or the device back and forth so that everybody is scanning and getting involved, you could very easily have people left out yeah. and have one piece of person being basically the game master. Yeah, and we were a little less successful on our second mission. That's because we did miss one of the clues due to it being disproportionate and we neglected to ask one character about it. But we still mainly resolved the, the mission. The third mission we did all right and we suspected a few... A few things and we could have done stuff a little better but I'd have to say we got frustrated we knew the person we need to try to talk to but we didn't know who would let us sort of unlock the location and that was a little frustrating as we found ourselves turning around in circles which brings me back to Carmen San Diego where I've spent a lot of time in that game flying around the world I know where I need to go I'm missing that one clue to just unlock the location and resolve that thing so that's one thing I would say about the game is it has a lot of the positives of a video game and a lot of the negatives of the video game. And the fact that we cannot arrest or bring in like the guilty people so that they can't get away is something that really bothered me. This game is only about the investigation. That's all you're doing. Don't worry about your suspects unless there's the potential for them to leave because you figured something out. They're really not necessarily going to, uh, to disappear. Or well, actually, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say there are some that some that died. Yeah, no, yeah, that's true. Or, but I would say is the ones that are guilty, like yeah, the ones clearly, that clearly guilty, like yeah. they are the ones responsible, not involved. They are going to vanish. So keep that in mind while you're playing the game. If someone's involved, if they're not the ones that are necessary, you know, the murderer or this or that, you'll probably be able to come back and talk to them again if they are heavily involved, like the murderer. Uh, something else yeah. they, they might disappear on you but typically if they do the, if that does happen in the game there's a good reason and it makes makes sense I think we've talked enough about the game itself so Julie I'm going to let you give the game a, a score oh, you're going to let me do this yeah huh? I'll let you do it first um, it, it doesn't happen very often but this game gets a failing grade for me it's, it's a 5 
And I, I got to back her up. This game, this game is a five. The more that we talked about the game, I was almost tempted to give it a six because of what it does. But there are just a lot of things that really irritated me about the gameplay. Now, this game is incredibly innovative. Yep. If you're looking for a light, fun family game to play with the kids, I think you guys are going to have, well, not kids, but, you know, like preteens, teenagers that can handle some of the more mature uh, material in there. It's, it's a little bit on the PG-13 side. I do think that you're going to enjoy it, but if you're someone that has played, like, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, has played more in-depth investigation games, or is a big fan of uh, police procedurals and things like that, uh, the fact that you can't bring in a suspect because you know they're guilty is very... So they can't get away is irritating. It drove me nuts. Uh, I, and then just to explain my five, I think as much as I love the art and that the story was good, the, the negatives in this case really do outweigh the positives, and I just... It doesn't happen very often, but I just got so frustrated with this game that at some point I was like, whatever, forget it. I don't care who did it. Uh, can we I, just go solve it? Can we just, you know, can we just solve it and get this game over with? It's, to me, that's very disappointing. And, and maybe there's a way for them to fix it. Um, maybe there's app issues that they can fix. And, and then, you know, maybe it's a different mm -hmm. game. But for right now, there's too much negative for me that's, that's making this not the fun experience that I think it could be. No, there, there's definitely some app issues. And while they have improved the app, I mean, we did talk to someone that says, oh, she's very nice, especially after you questioned her. And I was like, what? We questioned her? We didn't even get to unlock the location until we finally used our phone a friend, aka the criminologist, as I'm calling him, called him up and says, oh, you can find her here. I was like, wow, how did our clues not sort of lead us there earlier? And there was one of the characters where we did actually, like, communicate with other people that was at the same location as this other character, but it didn't unlock the location. So the app definitely does need some work. And that is probably where the five really comes in because I think otherwise we probably would have, you know, if we could have got to that location at the start of the, the second day. It would have had a better score. I don't think it would be my favorite game, but it would have a better score. Yeah, it probably would have been closer to like a, a seven, six and a half, seven rather than the five that it is. Yep. So with that being said, guys, I want to give Lucky Duck Games credit for an innovative, uh, a nice try, but for us personally, it just fell flat. But that doesn't mean that you guys won't like it and that you shouldn't check out the game. Uh, another thing, sorry, that I've I got to mention, I think we both agree, there is no replayability to this game. Once you play through the scenarios, you do get a solution. So in case you miss something, if you want to try to replay it because you missed something, do not read the solution. But once you've solved the case, there's no point in going back and playing it again. This is a game that you take and pass on to somebody else. So as usual, guys, don't forget to check below. You'll see links to other videos, other reviews that we've done recently. Uh, and as always, don't uh, hesitate to comment, like, subscribe. We love hearing from you guys. Yeah, so we're going to grab our drink. Grab our best friend. All right, keep playing games. Keep playing games, except maybe just not. This one, well, you can try it solo. Maybe you'll. I'll try it solo. I'll try some of the other the other stories, and maybe those ones will flow better. But uh, I don't know. I am curious on the expansion. I'd like to see what it's like playing noir, where I can bribe someone or do uh, use an action. There's even one with characters that's coming out. So I'm wondering if just maybe the retail version of this game or the base version of the game just isn't for us. Mm, maybe.